Hello and welcome to this video tutorial where we're going to learn how to program the CPU using the LMC simulator. The web address for this challenge is now appearing on the video clip. Now our aim is to create a small program that will ask the user to input a number, for instance number 5, and the program will calculate the sum of all the digits up to 5, for instance 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, and it will output the result. To complete this challenge, we're going to use the online LMC simulator. You can access it using this link here. Now, this is an LMC simulator uh, where you can write your program in assembly language using the LMC instruction set. And you can then execute the program. You will preview um, what values are changed in the random access memory. And you will also preview how the main registers inside the CPU are being affected during the FDE cycle. You can adapt the clock speed to make the program run at a different speed and you can interact with the program by inputting some values and previewing the output. So when you launch the LMC simulator you already have a program that is there for you that you can uh, run just to see if it works. Um, this one is not exactly the program that we want to uh, complete. This one is a countdown Okay, um, now we could actually adapt this code or we could start from scratch and I've decided that I'm going to start from scratch. When you start coding your own programs in LMC, you need to know what instructions are available. And you can use the LMC lookup table to see all of the instructions that are available to you. There are 11 of these and they are listed here. So you've got the input to retrieve a user input out to display a message on the screen um, and then we've got some more instruction that we will be using in this challenge. You can always refer to this using the LMC lookup table here. Okay so our first user requirement was to retrieve a user input and to do so I'm going to use the input instruction. This will enable the user to type a value in the input box and will store it into the accumulator. What I want to do is store this value into a variable. I'm going to call this number. And if I'm using a variable, it's also called a label, I need to declare this variable. So I'm going to, at the end of my program, use the dat instruction, and I'm going to set a default value to zero. Now the default value is not um, required. It's good practice to have one, but in this case, it would be overwritten anyway, straight away by the user input. And to test my program, I'm going to output the content of my accumulator, which would be the value that I've typed in. So let's try this. It's asking me for user input. I'm going to put 5. And it's outputting value 5. Okay, so that's perfect. Now, what I want to do is keep another variable that will keep the total of adding 5 plus 4 plus 3 and so on. So I need another variable that I'm going to declare at the end of my program and I'm going to initialize it to the value 0. As soon as I've retrieved my number and stored it, I'm going to add it to my total. And I'm going to store this as being my total so that um, it will keep track of um, the sum of all the digits. Okay. Once I've done this, I'm going to load my number back into the accumulator and I'm going to subtract 1 to this number. I'm going to take away 1. That's a sub instruction. And I'm going to need another label for the value 1. So this is going to subtract 1 to my number. And um, at this stage, what I want to do is store my new number, um, which is now 4. I want to add this to my total. I want to store my total and I want to carry on doing this. So basically I want to run this program one more time and then the number will go to 3 and run this program again and the number will be 2, run this program again and so on. And I only stop once um, I reach the value 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a branch instruction, BRP. Branch is positive, so if the result of taking 1 to my number is positive, I'm going to repeat from this line of code. And to branch to this line of code, I need to use a label. 
I'm going to call it loop. So I'm going to branch if it's positive to the line loop. Perfect. And the last thing I'm going to do is it's going to repeat that five times. And then once I subtract one and I reach a negative value, it's going to carry on to the next instruction. So the next instruction I want to do is load my total and output my total. Okay, let's try this program. I'm going to type 5 and my total should be 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 should be 15. Perfect, that's my output. And we can try this program with different values. So if I type 3, 3 plus 2 plus 1 should be 6. Perfect, so our program is now working. You can see how the program is loaded into memory here. So when I load the program into RAM, um, these are the different instructions. Um, the last instruction is a, a zero. Um, and then that's where my variable are stored. So my number, my total, and the value one is stored over there. Okay. Um, what's good practice is at the end of your program is to stop it. So I'm going to use a halt instruction which is a zero code. Um, so you can see all the code is stored here and all the values are then stored here, all the labels we've used. Okay, um, you can observe what's going on when you run the program and you can see the loop effect where it's repeating the same instructions many times. You can see the total value changing over time. Um, you can also see exactly what happens during the FDE cycle, what happened to our different registers, the program counter, the memory address register, the memory data register, the current instruction register, and the accumulator. Well, that's it for this video clip. If you want to practice different types of um, LMC program, you've got a few of these already um, defined for you that you can load into memory. Um, we also have a few more challenges on the blog um, that you can access to if you search for Little Man Computer on the search bar. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.